Some of you may remember that last year I did a list of my top 10 favourite movies. But then one year on, my opinions may have changed slightly. I mean, they have changed slightly. I mean, there's there are new movies that I now think are really good. So, one year on, here's my top 10 favourite movies during 2017. Maybe during 2018 I'll have a different favourite set of movies. Maybe there'll be new movies that I think are really good. But for now on, one year on, 2017, here are my favourite personal favourite movies. Now, numbers 10 and 9 from my previous video, well, my previous favourite movies video, they keep their place. I, a Cinderella Story and the 2004 Thunderbirds movie. I mean, yeah, some of them, they're not the best movies, but whenever I'm flicking through the channels, if I see them, I'll usually stick around, because... Well, with the Cinderella story, I just love seeing the ending, just seeing everything finally come together after an age of abuse, that everything finally works out for the characters. That always gives me a good feeling inside. It probably does with any movie, but I love it with them. And with the Thunderbirds movie, well, it just takes me back to being kind of like five, six years old and watching the old Thunderbirds TV show on VHS tape. I mean, it just... It always gets me wrapped up. Wrapped up nice and good, that film. Now, at number eight, another kind of reappearance from my previous list is Back to the Future Part 3. I know it was at number seven last time I did this, but it slipped down one place, but I still think it deserves its place on the list. I mean, I know everyone has always told me number two is the is the better film, and yeah, out of all of them, number two probably is the best, but... To me, number two is always very dark. You know, especially the villain's plan is dark, and even the dystopian future that they create is dystopian present is particularly kind of dark and evil. To which I prefer number three simply because it's bright, it's fun, it's colourful, and you can just get wrapped up in the story. Even with the time travelling train at the end, that is just so much fun that I I have to include here. So, yeah. I know everyone's going to say number two is the best, and yeah, they're probably right, but I always prefer number three. Uh, number seven on my list is was an honourable mention last time, because I forgot to mention it, but here it makes the list. Galaxy Quest. I mean, I, I, mean, I give my co commiserations for the death last year of Alan Rickman, but aside from seven no, eight movies of Harry Potter where he was being snitty. This one is another just gem where Alan Rickman is allowed to be snitty. I mean, him, Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver and co, they just, they make this movie just a joy to behold. I mean, my family have a tradition now of watching, re-watching it every year and, yeah, it may be campy and it may be making fun of every Star, Star Trek kind of cliche or stereotype you like, including the woman, the extremely attractive woman whose only job is to answer the telephone, and the crew member with no name who supposedly dies within, who always dies within one episode. They make fun of every joke they can, and most of them, they hit bullseyes. So, yeah, it it's not the best, but you know what? We, we love it. I, I love it. Yeah. But the animal is inside out. <laughs> It turned inside out, and it exploded. <laughs> oh, no one first to get a laugh. And number six on my list is a movie that I saw earlier this year, Logan. Some of you may remember my short little review of it. And, yeah. I mean, I didn't expect to see this movie, purely because I didn't see either of the two previous Wolverine solo movies, X-Men Origins Wolverine or The Wolverine. But when I saw this one, I thought it was just beautiful. And when it comes out on like DVD in the future, I'll probably be buying it and re-watching it again, just to kind of feel every moment of it. I mean, if Hugh Jackman's done as Wolverine, he picked a fantastic one to kind of bail out on, and he'll always be in our hearts. Yeah, so Logan deserves its place at number six. And number five, this was one that I forgot about first time around, 
and it probably kind of pushes the Lego movie off the list here. I mean, I still love the Lego movie, but number five is another one of... Uh, ah, no, wait, no, not another one. Yeah, at number five is the Edgar Wright film Hot Fuzz. I mean, I love all his Cornetto trilogy films. I've got them all on DVD. I rewatch them <laughs> every now and again. But Hot Fuzz is probably, I think, the best. Because it's just full-on action. Simon Pegg, Nick Frost doing what they do. And they've got a fantastic cast, including Jim Broadbent, uh, Bill Nye, Mar Martin Freeman, and uh, Timothy Dalton. Who's delectably evil? But yeah, it's just—it's a form mystery. It's fun. It's kind of action-packed, and while there are a few bits that are a little bit gruesome, it—it's fun. As I said with Back to the Future Part Three, it's fun. That's all really can be said. And number four is a newcomer to the list: last year's 2016's Suicide Squad. I mean, I know people ripped into this movie and. I never entirely got why. I mean, it, I personally thought it was brilliant. I mean, I went in with kind of a set idea in my head, like, especially with Will Smith as Deadshot. I was kind of mentally comparing him with Michael Rowe, who was dead shot in Arrow, and I can't be honest, he just blew him out of the water. I wasn't sure about Will Smith, but I came out of that theatre going, you know what? He did it. He, he gave me a character whom I really cared about, and was actually closer to the guy I'd read in the comics. I mean, it, this movie, I felt, was just perfect casting. I mean, Will Smith as Deadshot, Margot Robbie as the crazy Harley Quinn, that that was quite funny. Viola Davis as the tough-talking uh, Amanda Waller, and Jack Courtney as Captain Boomerang, I'll admit, got a few laughs. Ev everything about this movie, I personally, f I loved it. I mean... I know it got a lot of kind of bad press, but I still think it's good. And it was at number three of my top ten superior movies of 2016. And that was beaten out by my number three choice, Deadpool. This, I felt, was the best comic book movie of 2016, for good reason. I mean, Ryan Reynolds, he had done about... This was to be his fifth comic book movie, having previously done Blade Trinity, uh, Green Lantern, X-Men Origins Wolverine, and R.I.P.D. So, I was a little unsure kind of whether he deserved another chance, but he fucking nailed it out the park. Just, he just hit it far as he could go, and you know what, he, he did a brilliant job. I mean, I, I've still yet to buy a Deadpool comic, but from what I've read... And what I've seen, he just, he did good with this. Just the amount of action, of gore, of romance, and his kind of technique of breaking the fourth wall, it's brilliant. And number two, yet another keeper from the previous list, Guardians of the Galaxy. I know everyone loves the Avengers, and their first movie is pretty good, but Guardians of the Galaxy is one of those movies that no one thought would work, and yet it's it still did. And it is just, it's beautiful, it's... Intense, it's action packed, and you know what? It provides a really good time. I mean, yeah, everyone pref kind of finds the Avengers fun, but this, this, my family agreed, is probably a better movie. And I still enjoy seeing it whenever I can. And finally, at number one, still at number one from my list last year, is Kingsman the Secret Service. I mean, yeah. This provided me, this movie. It brought me with a load of stuff that I was unsure about, but it just it, it took everything home. So just I'd only really seen Colin F Colin Firth in kind of romantic comedy roles, and just to see him do that much action, that's just a massive payoff. As well with Samuel L. Jackson, I know I haven't entirely tapped into his filmography, but I only really knew him for heroic roles such as uh, Nick Fury and Mace Windu. And the guy from Snakes on a Plane. So just to see him do a villainous role, it's just... It's unexpected, but the guy nails it. And once again, one year on, there's a new set of favourite movies. Maybe by 2018, I'll have a new different set to talk about. But, but then again, Kingsman 2 is supposedly coming later this year, so you never know. I'll just get into the galaxy too. 
So, we'll have to wait and see. See ya.